Why use the keyboard when you've got the ability to believe? Faith is considered to be an unhesitating belief, a belief that does not require proof or evidence. When we use the word faith, the imagery that springs to most minds is often religious. However, that's not the only kind of faith to exist. In the present day, we encounter people whose convictions vary from traditional stereotypes to unorthodox archetypes. The word faith transmits a thoroughly different connotation for most people. It could pertain to a person, a place, a thing, or even an ideal. In our day-to-day, -day, our long-term mental refreshes are a consequence of this faith and its fluctuation. We justify new beginnings as our reboot. What we fail to realize is that every beginning is actually a revolution of faith. Faith is the biggest catalyst in changing our personalities. From religion, to culture, to people, to even politics, these are what give faith the prerogative to constantly recapitulate our personalities and our ways of living. With endless experiences changing our beliefs every second of the day, our faith, in the larger sense, is bound to be affected. From gold to copper, our faith is recasted by the effects of age and its crescendos. How many of us still believe in Easter bunnies? How many of us still believe in tooth fairies or Santa Claus? How many of us have grown into atheists or agnostics? Born into a Hindu family, I had no shortage of gods to believe in. With over 330 million gods embraced in my religion, choosing one was no walk in the park. Initially, I just prayed to the ones my parents prayed to. Going into a teenager, however, I shifted my faith into the ethereal beings I found I could relate to the most. My change in devotion completely re rewiring my state of mind. Somewhere around the ripe age of 15, I shifted my schools from a CBSE curriculum to an IB curriculum instead. Now you may be wondering, change in education? How is that connected to faith? Well, the differences in the two systems of learning were so vast that what was initially supposed to be a new beginning was actually a complete 360 degree turn on my faith. Recognizing and actually learning this contrastingly new curriculum affected my beliefs and understandings of the education and the culture around me. This psychological development gave the illusion of a change in lifestyle, when in reality, it was a change in my perspective. It was a rewiring of my mind. When I turned 16, I discovered astrology, a faith ridiculed by most. I was enticed by it. With everything new I learned about it, my faith strengthened. Now my observations of people stem from their astrological characteristics. Gemini split personalities and Cancerian's emotional baggage add all the drama my life needs, and the Virgos help keep it clean and tidy. This infusion of astrology, my pre-existing belief in Hinduism, added a filter to my faith, rewiring my mind. Being an immigrant, studying in international school, I practically invented my own culture, a rich combination of my Indian roots, the Western society, and local ideologies. Separating these three would raise three completely different souls. When you add them together, you get a new and refreshing person. A humongous mixture on its own. There's no doubt of its influence on the layers of my faith and its ability to rewire my mind. And these are just some of the more prominent or categorizable faiths. There are many more innumerable changes in my faith that I may haven't even noticed. And while they seem relatively normal, faith is as ridiculous as it gets. Take my mother, for example from not wanting to cross paths with a cat, to not believing in having house pets. My mother believes in it all. My father, on the other hand, strongly advocates for absolutely nothing that my mom believes in. And his disbelief in her beliefs is kind of a faith of its own, I believe. But regardless of how outrageous or bizarre, faith is still faith. And it doesn't always have to be personal. It could be another's influence or the passing down of beliefs through, gen through generations. So what was the aim of assessing my faith today? The goal I wish to achieve is to make each and every one of you reanalyze your lives and your faith. And you will realize that every single time you've changed your belief system, you've drastically altered the way you perceive, giving you the chance to start afresh, a chance you may have not even known you needed. All these different experiences and events have had a major influence on my beliefs. And our faith is built up by our beliefs. The art of starting fresh is not the art of leaving everything behind or embracing something new. It's changing your beliefs.
It is part of human nature to constantly develop, to change, to transform. But most of the time, we merely alter our habitual behavior. To really refresh our systems and give us that restart that we all crave, we need to understand what catalyzes it. And that is initiating a new set of beliefs. Everyone's personality is composed of a complex, interlocking system of beliefs. And on the individual level, real change can only occur when you realize that it's your responsibility to think, to feel, to act differently. This happens when the lens on the cameras are changed or their combination is altered. Lens after lens after lens after lens, our faith weaves our persona. And every single time, it shifts its philosophies. It revises every single thread that fabricates the tapestry of our minds. But we often are stuck in our beliefs, and this is what blocks our progress. Having rooted beliefs keeps us stuck and spiraling endlessly. But what happens if we change the very foundation of our faith? The beliefs that build up the bricks. Then, and only then, could we reboot ourselves. Thank you.